everybody, this is Erin from practicepharmacy.com, the student pharmacist site for study resources and real world pharmacy examples. Today we're talking about the number needed to treat, NNT. What is it? It's the number of people that have to be treated with a medication in order to prevent one occurrence of the unfavorable event, or in other words, the illness. For the sake of example, let's say we're looking at a new medication that's supposed to prevent rash in people who've been exposed to poison ivy. Let's call it Dendrotox. You rub it on your skin before potential exposure, and somehow it keeps you from developing an allergic reaction. The number needed to treat is 15. 15 people have to use the product for one person's allergic rash to be prevented. Let's take a closer look at what that means. Of those 15 people, two of them were exposed but aren't allergic, so they weren't going to develop a rash regardless of their use of Dendrotox. Five of them are allergic and were exposed, but they didn't have enough of an exposure to trigger a noticeable rash. So they also wouldn't have developed a rash even if they hadn't used the medication. The other seven are allergic and they were exposed and they all developed an allergic rash despite using the product. Only one person is allergic, was exposed, and did not develop the rash presumably because they used the medication. 15 people in all used the medication and only one person is helped. Now these numbers are determined by clinical trials. Two groups of people with similar demographics are formed and one group is given the medication while the other is given a placebo. Differences in efficacy are observed between the groups and conclusions are drawn based on the data. In the trials for this imaginary dendrotox, 53.3% of the control group developed a rash. So the control group didn't receive a real medication, whereas 46.7% of the treatment group developed a rash. Just looking at this data, you can see that using the medication seemed to have a positive effect. Those that used the real medication had a lower incidence of rash. You can also see from looking at the control group that not everyone was going to get a rash in the first place. There wasn't a 100% incidence of rash in those that got the fake medication. Looking at the treatment group, you can see that not everyone who used the medication avoided a, getting a rash. There wasn't a 0% occurrence of rash in those that got the actual medication. The efficacy of the product is there in the difference between the event rates in the two groups. The difference there is 6.6%. That's where the efficacy lies, and that's called the absolute risk reduction. So in official language, the control event rate minus the experimental event rate is equal to the absolute risk reduction. The absolute risk reduction gives us the number of people out of a hypothetical group of 100 people experiencing benefit from the treatment. The number needed to treat is the size of the group in which one person experiences a benefit. Uh, these ratios are proportionate to each other. So 6.6 .6 people out of a group of 100 people experience a benefit and one person out of an unknown size group experiences benefit. What's the size of the group in which only one person benefits? You can solve for X and notice that this is exactly how you calculate the number needed to treat but the formula looks a little bit different because it's just one divided by the absolute risk reduction where absolute risk reduction is expressed as a decimal. So in this case, it's one divided by 0 0.066, which is 15. The number needed to treat can be used to make formulary decisions. For instance, if Dendrotox costs, say, $20 a tube, then the cost to prevent one case of allergic rash would be $20 per use times 15 people using it for one prevention. So that turns out to be $300 spent to prevent one case of allergic rash. So depending upon how much it costs to treat an allergic, an allergic rash, $300 per prophylaxis may or may not be a reasonable amount to spend. All right, if you'd like a study guide on this topic, you can find one at practicepharmacy.com forward slash lesson forward slash number needed to treat. If you're studying pharmacy, my daily drug email list is meant just for you. 
Sign up on the website and I'll send you a mini drug review every weekday to help you master drug information. If you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Let's talk again soon. Adios.